You need a crafting table. Hello. I'm Joseph George um, with Dell. Thanks for uh, coming out to the Havana conference today. Uh, we're going to spend just a few minutes, talk a little bit about what's going to be happening this week, some of the things that are happening uh, that Dell is sponsoring. Uh, first of all, I want to introduce uh, Rob Hirschfeld. Uh, Rob Hirschfeld, also with Dell uh, on the architecture side. Um, Rob and I have had the fortunate uh, experience to have been at seven prior design summits for OpenStack. This is our eighth one. And um, actually, Rob and I are both on the OpenStack Board of Directors. Um, so it's, uh, OpenStack's been part of our heritage for a very long time. So uh, really excited about the Havana Conference here. Uh, just want to give you a brief overview of some of the things we're doing. First of all, on behalf of the board and the foundation, we're just very excited to have the biggest design summit that we've ever had. Um, I'll, as you can see, just uh, overflowing with, uh, with people interested in hearing about what all the different vendors are doing. Um, I don't know if you actually sat in on some of these sessions. I had my eye on two specific sessions this morning, and I couldn't get into either one of them. They were just so packed out. Um, so it's a, it's a good sign that we're going the right direction. Um, Dell's actually got uh, quite a bit that's going on this week. We've got a, a number of sessions that are going on. I'll be hosting a panel on SDN uh, on Wednesday. Uh, Rob is actually the chair for the ops track. Um, you also are hosting a panel on the reference architectures, I believe. The hot topic of the day, reference yeah, architectures. Yeah, reference architectures. Uh, so Rob will be doing, uh, doing some uh, um, uh, moderating a panel around that. Um, we also have a number of, I think we've got 40, 50 some odd Dell people here today. Obviously Dell's been doing a lot of stuff with OpenStack since, uh, since 2010. Uh, we've actually got an OpenStack solution uh, in market, the Dell OpenStack Powered Cloud Solution. Uh, we've actually been very active in the community. Uh, if you see Rob and I, our, our crowbar shirts that we're wearing today, yes, our, uh, <laughs> our contribution uh, uh, to what uh, OpenStack users are trying to do to deploy, uh, uh, to deploy OpenStack uh, crowbar, uh, an open source product, I should say, an open source community of things that are going on. Um, so a lot of stuff that we're doing in this, in this space, we're interested in collaborating with users, collaborating with partners, uh, and just really get, and getting OpenStack further adoption in the, in the market and the use, uh, and, and the, among our users today. Um, I will say that we've got a booth about in that corner. There's a lot of, a lot of people that are there to, to come to, to meet you and talk through some things. We are giving away these shirts, uh, OpenStack Game Changers. Have you seen these? Yeah. OpenStack Game Changers. You'll see people wearing these around. These are free. For this week only, these are free. Okay, so feel free to stop by and get one. Uh, no purchase necessary. What are they going to be after that? That's right. You have to buy a server? That's right. After that, we'll have to pay people to take them. Um, <laughs> but uh, feel free to go by and get one. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, little giveaways and stuff that are going on. Most importantly, probably based on what happened at the last event, we are giving away a Sputnik laptop uh, this week on Wednesday. Yeah. That's awesome. If you haven't heard about Sputnik, uh, it's based on our XPS 13 uh, laptops. Super thin, super light. We've got a couple at the booth today, uh, but it is running Ubuntu, the Ubuntu operating system on it, and it is specifically geared for developers. Uh, if you follow Barton George and any of the work that he's been doing, he's been our, our kind of lead around, uh, around Sputnik. He's actually here uh, this week as well. Uh, so go check it out, uh, get in the drawing, and we'll be giving that away on Wednesday at one o'clock. It'll be lunchtime, there'll be people around. Um, the T-shirts, that we have, you are highly encouraged to wear your t-shirts on Wednesday as part of the giveaway uh, festivities that will be going on. So be sure to grab one uh, before Wednesday and we'll all be wearing our Game Changer, uh, Game Changer t-shirts that day. Um, and then also at the, uh, um, at the, at the uh, booth today, we will have what Rob is doing and being very distracting about what, what I'm saying. I don't know if you've heard anything I said. Uh, <laughs> So I'll hand it over to Rob. You should know Rob and I have been working together for many, many years, so we've got this down now. Uh, Rob, we're doing some really interesting things with Minecraft over at our, our Dell booth this week. Uh, you want to tell everybody what's going on? Sure. So one of the things that we've been doing is, uh, you know, a cloud's nothing if you can't deploy an application. And so one of the applications that we've deployed and can show deployments of is a Minecraft server. It's one that a lot of customers have asked about. When are you going to have Minecraft support? We are completely going after the 12 to 18 demographic for our <laughs> new line of servers. That's right. Hey, you know what? I'm pretty sure there's not a lot of 12-year-olds in the audience right now. <laughs> But I'm sure they're all playing uh, Minecraft. We're going to check IDs later. Yeah, that's right. Make sure. So if you have 12, actually 6-year-old to 30-year-olds, 
Um, Minecraft, at Minecraft, you mine, you collect things, and then you build stuff with it. Is a very hot game. It is a um, create. It's a sandbox game, meaning that I, I have it running right here. And you can play it individually. You can play it on iPads. You can play it off of shared servers. Uh, and so I, I've, I'm telling you, I've seen six-year-old girls completely engrossed in this game. It's a collaborative game. So when people play on servers, they actually build things together. And then they can, you can actually get to the point where you build scripts and things like that. So my teenage, my teenage sons actually build very sophisticated scripts inside of these environments. So they can, you can make it into a shooter type game, you can make it into a purely creative game where you fly around the world, you can do just you know, almost second life type hangout in virtual environments. Um, the way this, this new generation of digital natives is using this game is truly impressive. So if, you, if your kids are asking about Minecraft, it is a safe game, it's a lot of fun to play with, it's not like uh, World of Warcraft where they're gonna get sucked in, have a great time, but get sucked in. Uh, so Rob, what are we doing over at, at the Dell booth with Minecraft this week? So what we're doing at Minecraft is we have a running Minecraft server and we can connect you up to it. We can show you how to deploy it using uh, Juju off the Sputnik laptop. And then, you know, of course, this session is to help you do the most essential part of that, which is actually play it. Now okay. what's it running in the back end? Actually? It's running, this is, this is what Minecraft looks like. And guys, it looks incredibly 8-bit. It's part of its allure. <laughs> I, it's it's stunning to me that uh, how interesting how many this. people have heard of Minecraft? Like Surely we can't be. Yeah. Okay. So you guys know what this is. Yeah. So how many people have played Minecraft? Minecraft. All right. Wow. You guys can help me because wow. I am not much. I, I am not much of a crafter. Here. Yeah. What I want to do is I want to show you enough that you can at least get started in the world because the way it works is you don't get anything until you've built something and it uses this, the classic ASD. Navigation, right? So you can do ASD and w, ASD W, move around, and from there you can take. If you hold down your left mouse click, you can start uh, basically taking things apart. So the nor this is the action: is that you come in and you act, you start, you click until you the thing that you have collapses into an inventory item, and then it shows up in your inventory. There's not gravity; it only affects certain things. <laughs> <laughs> that looks dangerous, Rob. So I can, yeah, my tree is, yeah. is just fine. But what happens is from there, once I have wood, I can then take the wood and actually take, take that wood and I can build something, in this case, sticks. So this is, the way this, this is the way it works. I take my sticks. Once I have my sticks, I can create a, a crafting table out of my sticks. Hold on. So what I'm doing is I am right-clicking to put, sorry. What I did was I put four pieces of wood into my crafting area to create what's called a crafting table. So this is, this is Minecraft. I take inventory items, I put them into the crafting table in interesting arrangements, and I get new, new items, okay? That, that's the majority. And then what happens is, so I press E to get this, this my uh, crap, my, I get, I press E to get my item, I scroll my mouse to change my tools. If I walk up, I've already made a crafting table. Let me do this. Here's my crafting table. I just put the new one I just made down. If I walk up to the crafting table and press, ah, where am I doing? Why am I not able to craft? There you go. If I walk up to the, the table and, and right click, then I can use the crafting table. You'll notice the difference now is that I have a bigger grid. Bigger grid lets me do things like take my planks. I needed sticks, so let me get let me take get my sticks. Oh, that's a pressure plate. Woo. Sorry, I needed sticks, so I take my sticks. So what you can see happening is I'm going through and I'm build, I'm actually taking things. I need to build a, oops, I don't need more sticks. So here's the trick. What I want to do is I want to go and build some interesting stuff to make. So this is how I make uh, 
wood, I can make sticks, I can make an oven, I can make torches, and I need some tools if I'm going to do something interesting. Almost out of time here. So if I want to make a wooden axe, which makes it easier to chop down trees, it's actually switching to different materials. I need two sticks and some wood. You see how I place them in here? So what I want to do is I'm going to take these out. And I'm going to take my wood. And now I have an ax. So I can take my ax. And now I can chop down trees. If I switch to my ax, I can chop down trees a lot faster. Or I can chop down hardwood trees. So all this is I, running, I, I missed ahead. where I was going with this, Rob. We're, all this is running on an OpenStack cloud over in, in, at a Dell data center. Uh, we've, got, we've got laptops over in the booth. Come out and play it. If you feel, um, if you feel like you're not going to be good at this game, and I'm looking exactly at Wayne Walls, uh, if you don't feel like you're going to be good at this game, you can get a version of it on your phone and play real quick. But go check it out. It's very cool. Um, like I said, we'll be giving away some prizes today. Uh, and just as the last thing, if you'd like to learn a little bit more about what Dell is doing, not with, uh, with Minecraft, but more around OpenStack, uh, you can, you can uh, visit us at dell.com slash OpenStack. You can drop us a line at OpenStack at dell.com. We'll be here all week. We'll be doing sessions. Um, I specifically do want to spend some time around Crowbar. Um, Rob is actually one of the founders uh, on our team that helped develop the Crowbar framework. Um, you know, I... Back in 2010 was when uh, OpenStack was just announced by Rackspace and, and NASA as two pieces that were coming together. Dell was fortunate and, you know, to be one of the p first partners to support it, um, which is a great thing because we were first, but it was, wasn't great because you've got two pieces of code that are munched together and how, do you, how the heck do you make something functional out of this? Um, so our engineering teams actually had a problem where you would actually have to deploy this onto bare metal and would take them days at a time to actually do it. And, if you build clouds, clouds are about building them and deploy, deploying them, tearing them down, reconfiguring them, redeploying them. It's this whole process of things that happen. And every time you had to tear it down, it would take days to actually bring it back up. So rather than just building a tool for ourselves, we built a tool, uh, a, a framework that we enabled for our, our open source community as well called Crowbar. Um, it allows you to deploy OpenStack, a multi-node OpenStack cloud on bare metal um, in a matter of hours, leveraging uh, Chef as a configuration management tool, but also do things like BIOS configuration, RAID configuration, network discovery, uh, uh, network discovery lays down Nog uh, Nagios and Ganglia. So, so a what, lot of those what Joseph things. isn't adding is that it's an open source tool, right? It's open source like four times. It's been a dot, and we want you to <laughs> collaborate with this, right? This is not just about Dell taking a product Great. and deploying stuff. Great. What, what we've done and what we've actually built a community around, because this isn't a Dell-only project, Crowbar is actually its own project. Correct. We are sustaining it, it's a Dell investment. But we want collaboration, we have people in the community, we already have Grizzly cookbooks that have Quantum and Cinder and um, sure, all sorts of pieces, we're working on thermometer yeah. and heat. All those things happen because people help us, right? right? We do a lot, we test a lot, we try and make sure all this stuff works, but it's the community aspects of this that are important. And we're using this work to help drive interoperability, for the, and thus the That's panel. Right. That's right. We're using this work to help drive reference architectures around RefStack. Um, you know, this work is, is something that we don't want to do alone, it's something we want collaboration on. Yeah. And, and we've been very uh, welcoming. We actually have a lot of people already playing. We want people to join. Yeah, the, the important thing to remember is uh, is a couple of things. Um, we've, we've done a lot of the investment and work up front to figure out how you leverage DevOps as a way to actually deploy these clouds. And we've found ways to build best practices into Crowbar. Um, so a lot of that work has already been done. So we'd welcome you to check that out. Secondly, uh, crowbar.github.com is where we're actually developing this in the open. As Rob said, it's not something we're trying to just retain. We actually welcome and encourage collaboration. So I'd recommend going out to the GitHub site, seeing what we're doing, and, uh, and finding ways to participate. And like I said, you've got a lot of folks here um, at SUSE, at Intel, at Dell, a number of other places that are leveraging Crowbar as part of what they're taking to market. Find anybody in, in any of those areas, and you can ask about what we're doing with Crowbar. Happy to let you know more about what we're doing, all right? So with that, I think our time's about up. Thanks a lot for your time, and we'll see you over there.
Thanks. Keep crafting. <laughs>